Hi, everyone. Uh, well, first of all, welcome to Onuk Fall in magnificent Manhattan on a gorgeous autumn day. I know it's supposed to rain later, but it's still gorgeous this morning, right? Uh, I am Nick Lippis. I'm one of the co-chairs and co-founders of Onug, uh, along with Ernest Leffner, um, previously at Bank of America, currently with Ernst & Young, and also Chris uh, Moretti uh, from Cigna, Onug board member uh, and executive over at Cigna. Uh, one, on behalf of the Onug board, we want to welcome each and every one of you to Onug. Thank you for spending the two days being with the community. You all are the movers and the shakers and the leaders of our digital future. So we welcome you all and we look forward to the interactions over the next two days. So uh, a couple of quick announcements and then we're gonna get going right into the program. Uh, so first of all, um, I wanna thank uh, our vendor partners. There is 50 digital transformation solution proof of concepts that was a long name, wasn't it? Proof of concepts that are happening over the next two days that are based upon uh, all of our working group use case requirements. So they're customized for our community. So I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of our uh, partners there. Second of all, brand new to this Onug is a cloud uh, native DevOps track. Uh, big shout out to Michael Clark for co-chairing that. Um, along with Anaf Dharani from Cigna, as well as Mick Curry uh, from Fidelity, Carlos Matos from JP Morgan Chase, uh, and Sam Gambaran from Kaiser Permanente. So um, consume that, it's, it's clearly our future is the bottom line there. I uh, want to thank Chris uh, Moretti and also Eric Reed for hosting us here for these next two days. Mark Boxer did an amazing job. First time I heard that, um, that presentation, I think I don't need to give my talk. I think Mark said everything I wanted to say. Um, but anyway, a round of applause for both Chris and also for Eric uh, for hosting us here for these next two days. So guys, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, very good. So our journey continues though from New York into London. We're gonna be in London uh, in about six weeks uh, at a, we have a great new partner in London called Skills Matter. They have 160,000 software engineers uh, and also the corporate host is Bank of America. So um, pack up your bags, we'd love to see you over in London on December 4th and 5th. And then 2020 is already uh, kind of baked or the cake is baked. So we'll be back in Dallas. We had an amazing conference in Dallas this year. We're going back in May. And then something brand new, Pablo Espinosa, uh, a founding board member, uh, moved to Target. So we're gonna do Onuk Target in Minneapolis on June 4th with OCP. We just signed the agreement last night. So, um, so that's gonna be an Onug uh, OCP at Target uh, hosted in their facility on June 24th. Uh, and then um, autumn of 2020, we're back in New York and then we're into London uh, again. So um, again, um, I think that's our journey. Let's get going with the program, right? So I have three things I think everyone is gonna walk away with this Onig from. First of all, and I think this is systemic, there is a major corporate organizational transformation taking place right now where IT professionals are becoming enterprise technologists and IT organizations are transforming into business engineering functions. Uh, second of all is that Onug is now delivering verified reference solutions, rigorously verified reference solutions in order to hasten the pace and take out the waste of building and running digital enterprises. Uh, and third, hybrid multi-cloud is one of the fundamental building blocks for the digital age. It's an area that we spend a good amount of time on uh, here at ONU. So I think those are the three. So let's get, uh, let's get started. So the bottom line, we've been on a journey for like seven years. And we kind of broke that down now into different phases. So uh, we're kind of thinking in three-year chunks. In the first phase, we've realized that we look through the industry through the lens of use cases and we vote on those use cases, and then those use cases become working groups. All right, and then you take a step back and you say, okay, well then so what, that's a lot of activity. Well, what we got out of that, first of all, is that we defined the SD-WAN marketplace, which is a $5 billion market. Now we're into SD-WAN 2.0 for really cloud and also um, uh, Edge Connect. We just partnered with MEF uh, for, for them to do the standardization work for ONU. So it takes our requirements, 
MEF does the standardization work and brings the service providers and managed service providers into our community. So that's one thing that we got out of it. The second thing we got out, remember Forrest, is that we did the hybrid multi-cloud uh, work at Columbia University in 2014. That's really defined our journey into the cloud. Then we moved into our second phase. What we realized is that everyone was struggling with digital transformation and what those programs were and how did they define them. So we started to aggregate requirements and that came out uh, a focus on not just single cloud, but multi-cloud. And then when in, in multi-cloud for the large enterprise, we focused on two of the most important things. One is how do you secure the application that goes between on-prem and off-prem? And then also how do you see that application to monitor it and observe it when it's an infrastructure that you don't own? So that's the focus that we've had and we continue that work you know, today in the working groups. We're at now a different phase in ONUG, and what now we're focused on is the impact of the digital consumer and how they are, they, how they are fundamentally impacting the kinds of corporations we are building and running and securing in order to satisfy a very new phenomenon in our industry. The other thing that we're focused on as well is that how do we speed up the process by finding some commonality around various different tools. And so we're now focused on reference solutions, uh, also around how do we minimize or reduce the amount of operational spend, and so there's a large focus on AI for SaaS, as well as uh, orchestration and automation. All of that together, if you look at the technology, is really focused at the intersection between applications and infrastructure, or an applications dependency map, which has all become software related today. So that's the focus of ONUG. The other thing I want to point out to everyone is that you look at the bottom of that graph and all of those brands that are now associated with the work that we've been doing, I'm really proud of that. I also take that and the board takes that as a real responsibility to be able to make sure that the work that we do together and collectively delivers real results uh, for all the community members. And it's really important to be digital, right? And let me give an example maybe of why I think that, and I think you probably will as well. If we think back to 2008, and if we went out to dinner, um, you might pay you know, your way with a friend like by cutting him a check or by, maybe by giving him some cash. We cut about 2.8 billion checks in 2008, $1.5 trillion changed hands. Cash, who knows, but that's the beauty of cash, right? It's totally invisible, right? So um, that's probably a couple orders of magnitude even bigger. Well, so that was how the world was in 2008. There was something else that happened in 2008. There was a jazz concert in Philadelphia. And two guys from the University of Pennsylvania went to that jazz concert. And they were so blown away by what they heard. They were like, wow, it would be so cool if I could basically just listen to that on an MP3 and I would pay for it right now on my phone. Well, Venmo was created right after that. So uh, Venmo was started in Philadelphia. Um, they moved here to Manhattan. Um, they got some funding in 2010, about $1.2 million or so. They then sold, I think, way too early in 2012 um, to um, Chicago-based Braintree for about $26 million because in 2012, a year later, or two years later, uh, they were acquired by, um, or Braintree was acquired by PayPal for about 800, no, I got that out of sequence, sorry. So, all right, they got 1.2 million in 2010, then they were uh, acquired by Braintree for about 26 million, again, way too low of a number, uh, and then Braintree was acquired by um, uh, PayPal for about $800 million. If you look at it today, both um, Venmo and their nearest competitor, uh, Tele, which is almost a consortium in the financials, they'll do about 200 billion each in transactions going across those networks, uh, those infrastructures. Um, Apple got into this marketplace with Apple Pay, about a billion transactions a month on Apple Pay. Google Pay is pretty quick as well on that. And if you look at really where this whole marketplace is going, it's going only one place and that's up. There was about $85 trillion of gross domestic product changing hands last year across the globe and only 3% of that was on kind of electronic payments. So huge market in the making thanks to jazz concerts in Philadelphia, right? Okay, so um, what does that mean for all of us? 
Well, what it means is that um, it is really the digital consumer that is kind of driving these kinds of changes in the marketplace. And something we all had a hand in uh, during the 80s, the 90s, in the, uh, and obviously, obviously in the 2000s, we were focused on connecting people up into the internet. And so if we look at where we are now, North America and also Europe are almost about 90% people connected. Uh, China and India over the next three years will have just as many people connected to the internet as does um, as we do have in North America and also in India. Next year, we should have about five billion people, and obviously we all know the Internet of Things is gonna blow these numbers uh, away. But the bottom line, you need people being connected uh, into the Internet in order to have digital consumers, right? Well, the digital consumers um, are now a forcing function. For those who studied calculus and differential equations, you'll kind of know what I mean by that. You know, it's like they basically force a major different change in a particular industry or, or a system, let's put it that way. So um, the digital consumer, they're worldwide, as I mentioned before. Um, they, are, they tend to be affluent uh, in developed countries. Uh, and also, third, they demand they demand secure digital experiences in every brand that they consume, whether it's buying firewood or going to a doctor or whether it's just buying stuff at a store, they want a digital experience. So the key thing about this is that they have an amazing impact in the marketplace. And okay, where can we look for for that kind of change? Well, if you look at these companies that are being flashed up behind me, each one of them over the last 18 months either filed for Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy, Chapter 7 liquidation, or they've gone through a major contraction in the number of brick and mortar stores in, in which they support uh, in their operations. Not only did those organizations um, fall upon bad times because they weren't digital, they weren't serving digital customers, but also the real estate in that particular area, all the supporting businesses as well um, have suffered uh, also. So not being digital is, has um, deathly consequences from a corporate uh, point of view. And so from an ONU point of view, what are we doing as a community to be prepared in order to service uh, digital consumers? Well, uh, first of all, I mentioned that IT is changing into a business engineering function, and I kind of think of four different things uh, as we think of organizations. One are the customers you're serving. Second, it's the, um, the purpose of the organization. Third, uh, it's how are you organized. And fourth, it's the kinds of business relationships that you're into. Uh, IT has traditionally been very inward focused, uh, servicing uh, business units within an organization. Um, their focus and their purpose has been really around productivity improvement. Um, they tend to be managed in silos, and if we look broader across a corporation, you have the chief um, digital officer, chief technology officer, chief information officer, and those in the CIO, we know that those are siloed even more to kind of mirror the industry, network, compute, storage applications, uh, and so forth. And then the relationships, the vendors were really, um, there was really mostly a vendor management relationship. IT would design the systems and then they would uh, vendor the man or manage the vendors in order to kind of deliver the products. That was then, this is now. So now the customer is more outward, more digital focused. The revenue, the opportunity and the purpose is really around revenue uh, generation. The organization is much more horizontal and this is a work in progress. We don't have the answers to any of this. This is why we're a community to try to sort out and figure out the most important part of the equation of digital transformation, which is the redeployment of human capital, the kinds of culture that we're gonna adopt and the skill sets that we need in order to deliver the results and the outcomes that we're looking for. But also on the relationships too, the relationships with the tech companies are more partnerships. And that's why here at ONU we have um, midday uh, luncheon partnerships uh, to show you how those relationships really work well uh, between uh, both a buyer and the supplier. Now, it's not only just human capital being repurposed right now, but also is that we need new models, right? We had the ISO or the uh, ISO model or the um, OSI, there we go, OSI model um, in kind of computing. Um, that model has, it's antiquated now, it's served its purpose, it's become flattened, we live in an API-driven world, it doesn't serve us um, very well anymore. Those who are also around service management, there is the idle uh, function. Now, many of you might be interviewing companies, and if they start asking you questions about idle, answer politely, 
you know, but don't take the job because that stuff just don't work anymore in the world in which we're living in, right? There's, then the deployment models that we would have tended to be three tiers, right? In the networking space, we had kind of the networking, you know, campus network three tier, the data center three tier. On web applications, those were three tier as well. But we don't do those anymore either. And so there's a need for a new way to think about or new models in which for us to actually deploy. So the key thing, so what is the function now of IT and also business engineering? What's well, really one around solution integration? We are all digital architects. It is so easy to talk about digital transformation, but it is so hard to actually deliver on it. And we are living in a software-defined world where we're stitching together various different software building blocks, whether that's through service meshes or APIs or, or RPAs to deliver a digital outcome. That's the main function, but we're doing it without any guideposts, without architectures and references. There's a lot of trial and error that's happening systemically across the industry, and that's why we're trying to work together as a community to develop reference solutions. The other thing that we've learned here at ONU is one of the best things, and please pay attention to this one part if there isn't anything else that, you, that you're paying attention to in my talk, and that is combining the old with the new is the best practice around digital projects. And what I mean by that is that in your legacy applications, there is an enormous amount of customer data and operational data. Data analytics takes that data and converts it into information. This data that is stuck in all these different silos across an organization, uh, it is imperative to access that and to integrate it in order to deliver good digital outcomes for your corporations. It is a real focus on data. Uh, that is really the key for becoming a digital enterprise. So it's this glue that I mentioned a second ago, tying, stitching all these uh, building blocks together. And what's fascinating about that is that now we are really customizing our organizations to deliver unique digital value to digital consumers. So much that I believe, and I think you all will believe here, is that the pendulum has swung. That we used to kind of view uh, tech uh, industries or tech, uh, tech companies as innovators. And they are. There's no doubt about that. But real innovation is pulling all this together and delivering surprise and delight digital experiences uh, for, our, uh, for our customers. That's really where the value is being found out uh, in the organizations today. And I think I'm actually a little bit behind on my presentation, so let me uh, talk a little bit longer <laughs> you know, on, this, on this one point. So it's, um, so it's, if we kind of look at like this, um, this droid being delivering uh, a package, it's obvious it's a cool, cool kind of little video, but the important thing is, is that all of the hard work, all the software that goes behind that in order to deliver that kind of experience uh, to the consumer. Okay. So this pendulum has swung, um, and now it's the innovation now is tying back into the, into the enterprise marketplace. So one of the key areas that we've been focusing on as a community is the whole hybrid and multi-cloud space. Um, and for good reason, because it gives us options and it gives us choices and allows us to accelerate uh, our deployment if we had various different ways in which we can actually uh, build and run applications. So this is a graphic that everyone here should be really proud of uh, because we defined this marketplace back in 2014, both at ONUC and also all your individual conversations that you've been having with the various cloud providers uh, as well. This is, these are three different markets. We have the private cloud, uh, which is not driven by any of the cloud providers. There's the public cloud market, and then when you stitch them together through these private stacks, this then becomes the hybrid cloud marketplace. And the key thing here is to have these private stacks that are coming from the cloud providers that try to normalize the tool sets that we're used to building and running applications in our private um, uh, data centers and our private clouds so we can extend them out into the public. This is, I think, where the new battleground is gonna be within the cloud providers, because you see many of them providing modules or extensions from these private stacks into competitors uh, various different uh, cloud offerings in order to provide some options of choice to kind of move applications around um, in the marketplace. So it's an important activity that we all have going on, but we also know is that this is a closed marketplace as well. All these stacks are proprietary, um, and what we've been looking at at ONUG is how do we provide some commonality uh, across this? 
And that's been the area of our working groups. So in our working groups, we have um, connectivity, which is the um, oh, uh, SD-WAN 2.0 work that we're doing. So we have base connectivity, and then there is the observability, and also there's the security around workloads. So can we get some commonality approaches and reference solutions there? And then how do we make this simpler or easier? Uh, and that's the AI ops and also the orchestration and automation uh, work that we're working on um, together. So this area, if we can come make it more common, then we can consume uh, more public cloud services. And I think that's the main point that we're trying to do. Because we're all on a journey, and the journey that we're on is slightly different. This is some data from uh, the registrations um, that we just recently did for this particular ONUG. And if you look at this, we've asked two questions. Uh, one was, what's the motivation to go into public cloud? Uh, and then also, um, when will you start to see a shift in your infrastructure spending? Uh, in here, 38% still think that the cloud is lower cost. Let me get a show of hands. How many of you think public cloud is lower cost? Show of hands. I got one. All right, don't be shy. Come on, don't, don't leave me hanging. A little show of hands. <laughs> okay, that's about like, I'd say 1%, you know, uh, you know, of the group. And frankly, that's what we think too, you know, but like this is the numbers that we got, 38%, you know, we're thinking it's, uh, it's lower cost. So, um, so 38% low cost is what we find, but I think, you know, we're, we're not kind of bought into like, you know, that if you've been living in the cloud for a while, you, I think you kind of know that it's not a lower cost value proposition. Uh, then there's another group, about 31%, that just don't know, and I can, I can understand that. That makes sense to me. Uh, but then the other group, around the other 31%, I think are the folks who really kind of are, are getting it, and that is they moved to the public cloud for really two reasons. One is to get instantaneous capacity, and the second is that that's where all the cool tools are in order to build and run applications, uh, especially cloud native applications. And then the second part of this is that uh, how fast will people move? And so um, obviously a big chunk of the audience doesn't know, and I, I guess I can get that. Uh, the other uh, key part is there's about 36% 36, that, 36 that believe that between 50 and 80% of their infrastructure spend will move. Uh, into the public cloud. Now, if you think back of our community, our board represents about 1.6 trillion uh, in market cap. We spend as a community about 350 billion annually. So there's a lot of weight behind um, these numbers. And the key point I think I wanna make on this is that it's all about pace. It's all about, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? And uh, we have a couple of different data points. Uh, Capital One gave us one data point about maybe being a little bit too forward leaning and that there's a risk profile uh, with that. Um, the graph that I showed you before with all the bankruptcies, that's another risk profile for not moving fast enough. So what's the right pace? How do you, you, know, how do you kind of adjust and move at the speed of your digital consumers? Well, I always look to Warren Buffett for advice in these kinds of questions. I love this quote uh, from Warren, you know, and um, it's like, only when the tide goes out do you know who's swimming naked. You know, it's like such a great quote. All right, so how does that relate to like us and, and where we are? Well, I think if you're not investing in human capital reorganization uh, that can effectively uh, exploit your investments in digital infrastructure and applications to surprise and delight your digital customers, uh, then you will be found out to be naked uh, during a downturn. Uh, Mark uh, said this in his uh, opening, uh, I think it's true, that um, we are all becoming digital uh, or tech companies. One thing that we found out from tech companies is that when there's a downturn, those who invest more heavily uh, in their customers tend to break away uh, from those who don't. So when you're a digital company, your margins are uh, higher, uh, your gross, um, your valuation tends to be higher um, as well, and you have a higher market cap, and your cost basis is lower. So it gives you the ability to kind of move beyond those that are in more physical or analog uh, kinds of uh, businesses. So um, we are all investing here at Ono. That's why we're here, all right? But not everybody is. About 11% of the uh, corporate uh, S&P 500 have uh, technical committees that are on uh, their boards. That's only 11% of the S&P 500. That's 55 companies. That's 455 that don't. 
um, that are still kind of having the Lawrence Welk music playing in the boardroom while they're, while they're meeting. That's, um, that's a little scary proposition to me, being an American um, and being you know, part of the American economy. The, um, there's another couple of common dots that I want to connect you know, for you all. And that is, I talked about the kind of the, the reorganization or the operational transformation that's taking place. Let me share with you a couple of different data points. Uh, we had the pleasure of having Jim Fowler, uh, who was the then CIO of GE, uh, present here at ONU. Now he's over at National. And he shared with us is that uh, for him to justify his organization, they would be able to deliver pretty regularly about 4% return on that investment or 4% EPIDA contribution at the end of the year. And he said in the last couple of years, it's been getting harder and harder to do that, maybe 1%, 0%. And that's why many of those uh, who are working in legacy IT uh, jobs um, see a constant reduction in force and budgets that continually get, um, get, uh, get shrunk during the year and they have to live with the mantra of doing uh, more with less. So there is a kind of a, uh, a change that's happening in terms of the return on investment around leg legacy. What we found at the, uh, at the Dallas ONU is that uh, the cost basis for chargeback is starting to really change. And that, that is like the number of users divided by, or the cost divided by the number of users. So as the number of users shrink, then the chargeback cost goes high. And so many believe that in three years or so, the chargeback cost for legacy applications will grow by a factor of 10, so 10 times. And that's a big motivation to kind of move off of some legacy applications. Uh, then there are various cloud providers. We know there are at least two that are focused on our community and the Global 2000 in particular. Um, and what they're looking to do is to reduce uh, the cost of infrastructure, compute, storage, and network to about a tenth of what it is today, but deliver about 10 times that uh, performance that we have today. So you start connecting these dots and you start to realize that, that there are forces um, on multiple different um, planes that are forcing a major change around organization and how we are uh, delivering digital value uh, to the marketplace. Now, what's also happened pretty rapidly, though, is that um, the uh, salaries for particular skills are, going, are changing pretty quickly. Now, if you're in the cloud, if you're in the uh, Fortune 1000 and you're a cloud architect, you're doing really well. If you're on the East Coast, you're making about 350,000 a year. If you're on the West Coast, maybe about a half a million dollars uh, a year. So, you know, good for you, hooray. Um, but you gotta deliver, and you have to deliver agility. Uh, what we also found out at ONUG is that your time window has collapsed significantly. So it may be about six months that you had in order to deliver on a project. Uh, now that, uh, now your uh, customers are asking you, what can you do for me in about two weeks? So there's a major contraction. The good news here is that we know that the technology will afford it. Um, the question is, um, do we have the business process and the organizational process in place? Uh, we have uh, board members that can fire up a 40 node micro cluster in about seven minutes. Um, so we know we have the technology. Um, the problem is that it takes about 60 days uh, in order for that to get approved. <laughs> right? So, uh, so process uh, is really the thing that's slowing everything down. It's not the technology. We'll solve all the technology problems, but we need uh, better thinking around, around process, organization, and skills uh, within our organizations. Okay, um, so I wanna start to like uh, wrap up. Uh, I mentioned our working groups. Uh, I wanna give a couple shout outs to a few people. Um, Steve Collins um, is around here somewhere. Oh, right. <laughs> Steve is like right in front of me. Hi, Steve. Uh, Steve has done an amazing job in the working groups. We have governance and cadence now that we never had uh, before. So um, Steve is doing a great job in helping the working groups move through uh, the process of frameworks to reference solutions and into verified uh, reference solutions. Which brings me to another shout out. Um, oh, um, Jacob um, Rapp, as well as Bob Wasaki at Microlan. Um, just want to give a shout out to those guys. They did the first verification uh, testing of the cybersecurity reference solution, which is going to be presented here uh, at ONUG. 
Um, last uh, shout out, and believe me, there's so many shout outs that I can do, but on the AI ops uh, area, we have so many people who have contributed uh, into that. Uh, there's Fee Gall and Bob Friday and Dave Moriarty and um, oh, Tim uh, Van Hout uh, over at VM, uh, VMware, uh, Chris Drumgool over at GE. Um, that work is actually coming to fruition. We're gonna see the first um, uh, deployment of that um, tomorrow morning. So uh, please stay tuned for that. It's a fundamentally different way in which we do AI ops and it's a real focus on the data. Uh, and it's all about uh, to make great wine, you need good grapes. To do good AI, you need good data. Uh, and we focus on the data part, uh, part of that. So um, on the working groups, there are about 334 volunteers. Uh, there are six working groups and one reference solution. Now, we want everyone to participate in the working groups, and there's a lot of folks are. We have more than half of that 334 IT execs than, than the vendor community. Um, but it's not an odd thing. It's a human behavior thing. It's like you might have like 100 people in a working group, but only six people do all the work. So um, anyway, participate in the working group, and there's a call to action. Um, please do contribute. We'd love for you to get involved um, in the working groups uh, as well. Okay, um, I mentioned um, Chris um, already a little while ago. So Chris, why don't you come on up? Chris is our host uh, for this ONUG, and I'd like for him to talk about um, the relationship um, between the ONUG community and Cigna and the value that is found there. So Chris. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Uh, I'll go fast, try to get us back on track. So um, I've been an ONUG board member for about two and a half years now. Um, just a few quick points on why I think it's important for Cigna to be a part of ONUG. Um, first and foremost, it's an opportunity to collaborate with peers, with great technologists across many, many different companies, a bunch of, uh, solving you know, technology problems on a daily basis. And, and the, what, what do we get out of that? You know, I don't like making mistakes, so there's an opportunity not to make the same mistake twice, right? To learn from our peers, to learn from our colleagues. Um, collaborating on driving simplicity in our environment. If, you know, as Nick spoke about, this, this digital evolution requires us to be faster, more secure, more agile. You know, as, a as a group, we can, we can address that and we can go out and we can drive better solutions across, across our industries, across our technology partners. Um, there's so, mu so many ways to get involved here. You know, there's the POCs, there's the working groups. You get, you get, you know, you'll get out of ONAG what you put into it, and it really is a great opportunity to, to roll your sleeves up, work with smart people, come up with great solutions, and really, you know, we can affect, we can affect the message and we can affect the future of how IT supports our businesses. We can affect the digital economy. It's a great, great opportunity. So on behalf of Cigna, on behalf of Dr. Mark Boxer and Eric Reed, I'm, I'm really happy that everybody's here. I, I think it's going to be a great ONUG 2019. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Chris. Okay, great. So uh, I started off with three things I think that you're going to leave this ONIG with. Uh, first is that uh, there's a fundamental corporate organizational transformation occurring uh, where IT professionals becoming enterprise technologists and the IT organization itself is becoming a business engineering function. It needs to. Second is that ONUG is delivering verified reference solutions to hasten the pace, take out the waste of building and running digital enterprises. Uh, and third, hybrid multi-cloud um, is a fundamental building block uh, for the digital age. Mm -hmm.